What's up, YouTube? Vintner here. Uh, I told you guys that I was going to do uh, more deck profiles and stuff. Um, I wasn't lying. Uh, this one is my Robin Williams tribute deck. Um, it's a really fun little deck of cards. No, Robin Williams sadly did not voice um, the genie in Kingdom Hearts. It was played by another gentleman. I cannot remember his name. But, for all intents and purposes, since this guy did not voice Genie in the movies, um, oh no, he did. Uh, the guy that voiced Genie in Kingdom Hearts also voiced Genie in, um, Aladdin Return of Jafar, but Robin Williams voiced Genie in, um, the original Aladdin and then, um, King of Thieves, I think is what it's called. Prince of Thieves. Um, both really, both fun movies. Um, so, I built this deck. It is a Robin Williams tribute deck. Um, it's Aladdin. I don't know what mu much more I can say about it. It's more of an aggro based deck. Like, you are playing two Valor form. Um, but I'll get into that in a second. Um, but you have a little bit of magic just because... And the only reason you play worlds in this deck is to still try to out aggro your opponent. Um, that's literally the only reason you play worlds in this deck is you want to keep your health high um, to make sure that you're not taking health damage as much from your opponent as you're dealing to them. Um, so I'm going to set this off to the side really quick, go into my player card choice. Um, this is the Flag Sora promo. It's got five health, it's level two, and it's got five attack, one magic. Um, when this card goes, it um, is challenged by your opponent, it gains plus four attack value. So if you challenge your opponent with this player card, he stays at a five. But if your opponent challenges you, this Sora automatically gains a plus five sport value. That is fantastic. Um, especially for a deck like this, so it, it's really good. Uh, let's go ahead and start getting into cards um, and card choices. All right, so first we've got two Valor Form Sora. Um, he has a, an automatic nine attack, zero support value. He can equip uh, two equipment cards at a time to himself. Um, instead of only being able to use one equipment card, um, and every time you win a challenge against your opponent, he you do an additional health damage to your opponent, so it works just like your opponent works just like Soul Eater um, for Riku. But if you lose a challenge while the Sora Valor form is on top of your Sora player card, if you lose a challenge, the Valor form gets discarded. That's why you play two just for in case some if you if you do lose a challenge. Um, to help out with that, you get, you play three Goofy, um, I mean, it, this, this, this is the one that goes and searches out and gets your, um, I think this is the one that gets the technique, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, sorry. When you play a technique card while this card is in play, you can search your deck for a, uh, an equipment card. But... I'm not a big fan of technique cards because they're so situational. Um, so, I thought this was the one where you could search it. Um, and then I play two goofy level threes. So I play three level ones and two level threes. The reason I skip level two is, one, I don't have enough level twos. I have other I have level twos sitting in other decks. Um, two, this deck is so... It is such a tight-knit deck that it's so hard to fit anything else into it. Um, this goofy level 3, this specific one, um, draws you a card when it comes into play. So it's a really good choice um, as a level 3. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the Aladdins. Uh, 3 Aladdin level 1. Um, the If you're going to play an Aladdin deck, pick up the Aladdins from Break of Dawn because the original La Aladdins are not as good. Like, they've got a lower attack value, they've got a lower magic value. The ones that they made in Break of Dawn are so much better. Case in point, um, 
I'll get into that in a second. Uh, one, you, with you're playing two level twos. Um, when the level two from Break of Dawn comes into play, you search your deck for any genie magic friend card and add it to your hand. Um, the original Aladdin set, none of them searched out Genie until level 4, and the level 4 had a 1 support value and a 4 on magic, whereas just the level 2 alone has a 3-3 three, three on attack and support, uh, attack and magic. Um, and then 2, Aladdin level 3, yet again, um, the Aladdin level 4 from the original sets had a 1 and a 4, this level, just the level 3 from Break of Dawn has a level, has a 5 support and a 4 magic. So if you're going to play Aladdin, pick up the ones from Break of Dawn. Um, let's go ahead and get into Genies. Um, I play 1 level 1, um, just because he's the easiest to drop off, plus when he comes into play, he is an automatic draw. Um, you have to control an Aladdin to play him, so the only ways to play Genie are you have to use um, Aladdin. You can't summon Genie like nor um, a normal magic friend just of any deck. You have to play Aladdin to be able to summon Genie. You have to control, it states in all of their effect text, that to play this card you have to control a an Aladdin with at least a 1 on magic. And since our level 1s have a 2, Instead of a 1, like the original Aladdins, these are really good. Um, and they're the, you can play off of um, Genie's attack and magic value, because Genie's magic value is really good throughout, too. Um, and his attack value. Um, 1 Genie level 2. Um, he's just there. He's got a 7 and a 3. 2 Genie level 3s. Um, uh, he's got an 8 and 4 on his attack and support value. Or attack and magic value supports. That's fantastic. Um, your point of this deck is you're trying to summon Genie every turn with a Valor form equipped, and you want to be able to challenge, summon Genie and challenge every turn. Now, I know I'm not playing the level 4 Goofy that searches out Valor form. Um, with as much draw as there is in this deck, like the level 1, you're drawing up your hand up to 6 cards every turn. Um, and with how much searching you're doing in this deck, you don't really care. You're gonna be lowering your deck enough to where you don't have to search out the Valor form. Um, and then one level 4 Genie. Um, the level 4 genie can be played off the level 3, um, Aladdin. So, your level 4 genie, when it comes into play, you search your deck for any magic card in your deck and add it to your hand. That's really good. Um, I, I just can't say enough about genie. Genie's great card. Um, it's fun. Um, Let's get into other friends. Uh, three Jasmine. I play one Break of Dawn Jasmine and two of the original. Um, the Break of Dawn G uh, Jasmine gives plus two support value to all um, Agrabah friends. So all of your Aladdins get plus two. All of your, uh, even her, your Abu, your Iago, they all get a plus two. So it's really good. Um, and then the original Jasmine, when she comes into play, you search your deck for an Aladdin and add it to your hand. Um, so I wanted to play two. I wanted to play two and one. Um, just once I've exhausted these, I can slap this on the table and get support value pluses. Um, so that's a personal preference. Like you could literally just kick out the uh, Jasmine from Agraba. Um, she doesn't really matter. Um, let's get into other friends. Let's go with Abu. Uh, if you discard this card from your friend area, you can choose and discard one equipment card in play. He's just a counter to things like Roxas. Um, Iago is really good. Um, if for some reason you do start world racing in this deck, because it is possible because you play so many worlds, um, and that's one thing I want to go over. Just because this deck can world race, it is not a jack of all trades deck. Um, a jack of all trades deck is specifically you are trying to 
do either one every turn. You're trying to challenge, you're trying to ev do everything. Um, this deck is solely really focused on aggro, but you try, you're playing enough worlds to always keep your health high. That's the big point of the amount of worlds, is I wanted to play enough worlds to keep my health high. Um, 3, 6, 9, 11, 13. Yeah, you're barely playing enough worlds to level, like, barely. So uh, you're probably not going to win by worlds. It's not going to happen much. Um, Iago, if you discard this card from your friend area, you choose one dark heartless card on your on your Agrabah world and ditch it. That is amazing. <laughs> um, and because you're aggroing things in the teeth, uh, Waka, why not? Uh, let's give an automatic plus one support uh, attack value to your player card. It's a constant. You just keep walking in your area and just kind of roll. Um, these next couple of cards, they're not Agrabah based, but they're uh, support based to where they help you challenge better. Um, play one Yuffie. Uh, when she comes into play, you uh, choose one card randomly from your opponent's hand and discard it. So, I mean, it's really good. Um, yeah, choose one card from your opponent's card, hand, hand at random. Um, sorry, I just had to reread her because I'm reading it upside down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, this would help you if your opponent has just a couple of cards left, two cards left in their hand, they're sitting on them, you know they're probably going to be attack cards. Um, or maybe a world card they're waiting for next turn. Um, shove Yuffie on the table and you just got rid of one of those cards. Um, Leon helps you to where you, he can only be discarded by battle or challenge, uh, meaning your opponent can't gravity him. Um, so he, and you can also, he's got an amazing attack value boost. Um, now, I showed you guys that I had this deck built a little bit ago. The only reason I didn't showcase it is because I was waiting to pick up an extra copy of this next card. Um, as a lot of you guys know me, if you guys have watched my old Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon videos, I don't like having to move cards around from other decks. I like to have multiple copies so I can have multiple decks built at once. Um, so I finally picked up a second Sephiroth. Um, now he's your challenge fodder. Uh, he's gonna just sit in your friend area and kind of roll. Um, he, ever, instead of being discarded when used in a challenge phase, or when used in a challenge, he just gets shoved right back into your friend area. Um, he gets moved back down into your friend area, sorry. Friend area, move him up t higher up in the friend area, then they go back down. Um, so, he's fantastic. Like. If you're going to build a, an aggro deck, you need Sephiroth. Um, but the only problem is how hard these are to find. Um, got two attack cards, um, Divine Rose and Oathkeeper. If I had them, I'll be honest with you, if I had them, this would be taken out for another Oblivion, and then I would just shove in and add one to the, uh, to the deck's count of an Ultima weapon. Um, but since I don't, these are the next best attack cards. Um, Obli uh, Oathkeeper, when you kill a Heartless on your world, you gain a health, and then this one's just a plus five. Um, I just don't own enough extra copies of Oblivion. I think I own two or three tops. Um, so I don't have enough to go around. If anybody has Oblivions that they want to get rid of to me, I would love to pick them up from you. I just can't I used to have a ton more um, in with moving a couple of times since I've played this game in the last few years. <laughs> I've lost several. So, uh, let's keep going. Equipment cards, uh, Kingdom Key, Oblivion, and Wishing Lamp. Um, Oblivion is there because it gives the best of, of these three's support value added to your player card. Kingdom Key is for if you face down an Ansem, um, plus you're only a level two player card, so if you're playing against a level three, you're automatically gonna be deducting an additional health from your opponent um, if you win a challenge. Um, and then Wishing Lamp, every time while this card is in play, um, 
you draw a card each time you play an Agrabah friend card, as long as Agrabah is your topmost world. Um, that is fantastic. Like, you can't, like, that equipment for this deck is amazing. Um, get two, uh, Lamp. This card is one of the most dumb Lamp, or Wishing, or, uh, equipment cards in the game. Um, only Agrabah friends can equip this card. Um, if... You, uh, during the end phase, your genie cards do not have to be discarded. Like, as long as this card is equipped to an Agrabah friend card, your genie magic friend cards do not have to be discarded during the end phase if you didn't use them in a challenge or anything that turn. Um, that's so amazing. You have no idea. Like, because at that point you can just summon genie and sit on him in your world and let your opponent fear the attack power boost. Um... I don't know how many, like, if you're going to play, you want two to three of these. Um, it, it's so good. Plus, it gives a plus one magic to whoever you've got it equipped to. Meaning, if you equip this to a level two uh, Aladdin, you can play level four genies. That's fantastic. Um, then we get into two magic carpet. This is a plus two attack value, plus one support. Or plus one, plus two support value. It's plus two, plus one magic. Sorry, I can't speak today. It's, I'm, I just woke back up. I'm sorry. It's like it's almost noon, but I was so tired I passed out. Um, you can only equip it to Aladdin, Jasmine, or Abu. If the bearer of this card would be forced to be discarded, meaning by challenge, battle, um, uh, by card effects, anything, you can discard the magic carpet instead. That's amazing. Um, so those are your equip cards. Uh, let's get into Dark Heartless. Um, Bandit, he's level three with a plus 10. He's level three with a 10 pow. Um, he's really good. Uh, Pot Spider, I just play the one of. Um, I know some people are uh, want to play the Pot Centipede plus the Pot Spider. Um, but it's not as good. Uh, the Pot Spider says when it comes into play, if your opponent does not control at least one friend or magic friend card, um, they take a health damage. So, he's good. Uh, and then we're going off the Aladdin theme. Let's, pl let's play one of the best Heartless in the game. Um, the Cave of, Wonder, Cave of Wonders Guardian. They, your opponent has to deal all damage to it first. Um before they can deal damage to other Heartless cards. He's fantastic. Um, three Agrabah, level three. Um, lightning damage is doubled here. And then your opponent can play Heartless cards or Villain cards, just Dark cards of any level, onto this card. Um... That's really good for your opponent. Sucks for you. Um, so, uh, but no, it's, it's again, it's just there for the fact that you want to be able to get health back. Um, two level two. Um, this is the primary one you're going to try to keep up um, is because it's still all lightning dam damage is doubled here. Um, and then just because I only own one, um, because it's a rare and you're only guaranteed one of each rare from a box break of dawn, uh, one Agrabah level one when it comes into when you play it, uh, search your deck for an Aladdin, add it to your hand. Uh, fantastic. <laughs> Alright, and then finish this deck profile off with magic. Uh, one gravity, you just want, you're trying to control your opponent's amount of friends in their friend area so you can make sure you're challenging them and beating them every turn. Um, the nice thing about this is this can combo off with Magic Carpet. You play, you equip Magic Carpet to like a genie or, or sorry, not genie, uh, like your one of your Aladdins. Um, play Gravity, target your Aladdin, and then target one of your opponent's friend cards. Or sorry, your opponent picks their own. Um, I think your opponent picks their own. Yeah, each player must choose. Sorry, I didn't. It was. It's not that amazing. Um, but how that works is you pick your Aladdin, your opponent picks a friend card in their friend area, and then Aladdin unequips the magic, or the uh, magic carpet, you keep your Aladdin, your opponent loses a friend card. 
that's fantastic. Um, two Thunder, low level magic, um, easy, easily played off of even just your level one Aladdin, and then one Thundara. It's just there to make sure you're gaining health back from playing your worlds. Um, I mean, if if the deck played more worlds, you could consider it a jack of all trades. But since you barely are able to pump out worlds that much, and you are prime, your primary focus is to make sure that your Aladdin or your Valor form is in play, your Aladdins, your Genies, and you're challenging your opponent every turn. That is what makes this not a jack of all trades deck. But, um, you could turn it into a Jack of All Trades deck because of Aladdin's magic. Um, you could make sure that you, you could play, um, you could keep the Valor Forms, you could shove in a Cloud, um, and just kind of roll on your opponent with Thunders, Thundagas, and then a butt-ton of friends, and turn it into Jack of All Trades with a couple of more world cards. Um, but for that reason, it is not, you're just using the worlds to... Make sure, sorry, to make sure that you're gaining health and staying above your opponent. So, I hope you enjoy the deck profile. Like I said, that was a Robin Williams tribute. Um, I hope you guys have a good one. Peace, guys.